Williams was convicted on three counts of capital murder along with ex NOPD officer Antoinette Frey. Triple murder case that has gripped the New Orleans Police Department and this community for the last 24 years. The duo both sentenced to die for killing two members of the family that owned the restaurant they were robbing. Frank's fellow police officer Ronald Williams Antoinette Frank was a 23 year old rookie New Orleans police officer when she and Rogers Lacaze terrorized the family owned Kim Ann restaurant, shooting and taking the lives of officer Ronald Williams and siblings Ha and Chong Vu during a 1995 robbery. Frank currently resides at the Louisiana Correctional Institute for Women in St. Gabriel, Louisiana, one of the only two women on the state's condemned row. This is her story. Unstable childhood. Frank had an unstable childhood. But there was one thing that was clear to her since she was a small girl, she wanted to become a policewoman. As a teenager and later on young adult, Frank suffered from being a member of a broken family. Her brother was a law fugitive, her father would appear in her life only occasionally, and Frank became distressed about these issues, needing psychiatric help. According to Chuck Hustmeyer, a former policeman himself, when Frank applied to become a cop in Louisiana, she lied about her psychological and psychiatric condition in order to be hired as a policewoman. Frank applied with the NOPD in 1993. Several red flags turned up during the hiring process. She'd been caught lying on several sections of her application and had flunked two standard psychiatric evaluations. Psychiatrist Philip Scuria examined her and advised in no uncertain terms that she not be hired, saying she was shallow and superficial. When it looked like her application was stalling despite protesting Scuria's evaluation, she left a goodbye note that made it sound like she would take her life and disappeared for over a day. Despite this, the NOPD was chronically shorthanded and desperate to get more people on the force. Even with this shortage, the department did not hire anyone who doesn't live in New Orleans. Accordingly, she was hired on February 7, 1993. She graduated from the police academy on February 28, 1993. Frank's Service Frank served in the New Orleans police for less than one year and was hired despite being caught lying on several sections of her application. During a shooting, she met her future boyfriend, an alleged drug dealer named Rogers Lacaze, who had been badly injured during the shooting and who required help from Frank that night, as well as hospitalization. Frank and Lacaze fell in love quickly. The couple shared a passionate relationship. Perhaps feeling that Lacaze brought her the solace she needed in life, Frank became so infatuated with the young man, who was 18 at the time, that she even let him drive her police car around. Though she kept their relationship private, other police officers witnessed Lacaze driving her car and even observed him moving her police unit at the scene of an accident she was investigating. On one occasion, Lacaze accompanied her on a complaint call and she introduced him as a trainee. There were other times when Lacaze was introduced as her nephew. On March 4, 1995, Frank and Lacaze visited Kim An, a Vietnamese restaurant in East New Orleans. As the restaurant was closing early that morning, Chao Vu, sister of two of the victims, went into the kitchen to count money. She re-entered the dining room of the restaurant to pay officer Ronald Williams when she noticed Frank approaching the restaurant yet again. Sensing something was wrong, Chao Vu ran back to the kitchen and hid the money in the microwave before returning to the front of the restaurant. Using a stolen key, Frank and Lacay's entered the restaurant and began to walk quickly to the back of the building, pushing Chao, one of Chao's brothers, Coke, and a restaurant employee along with her. Shots rang out and Frank ran back to the front of the restaurant. Chow, Coke, and the employee hid in a cooler in the kitchen, concerned because they did not know the whereabouts of Chow's and Coke's sister and brother, Ha and Kong. From inside the cooler, Chow and Coke could partially see the front of the restaurant. Chow initially could see Frank, who appeared to be looking for something. Frank moved out of Chow's line of vision, and then the three hiding heard additional gunshots. Coke next observed Frank searching in the area where the Vu usually kept their money. He then saw her walk over to the area where he later found the bodies of his brother and sister, and he heard more gunshots. The Chaos Frank and Lacaze were shouting and demanding the money. Ha and Kong did not know where Chow had hidden the money. 21-year-old Ha was shot three times as she knelt pleading for her life, and 17-year-old Kong was shot six times and pistol whipped. After Frank and Lacaze left the premises, Kong emerged from the cooler and ran out the back door of the restaurant to a nearby friend's house to call 911 to report. Chow tried frantically to call 911 on her cell phone, but being inside the cooler, she could not receive a signal. Frank dropped off Lacaze at a nearby apartment complex, both knowing that there were witnesses left behind. 
Antoinette Frank had obtained an off-duty job as a security guard at the restaurant along with Officer Williams, who considered her to be a friend. Frank heard the 911 call on her portable police radio, saying that an officer was down at the Kim On restaurant. She returned to the scene, parked in the rear, and entered through the back door of the restaurant. She made her way through the kitchen to the dining room, where Chow waited for help at the front door. As Chow bolted through the restaurant's front door to the safety of arriving officers, Frank immediately identified herself as a police officer. Chow told Frank that she knew what she had done and cried to the officers that Frank had committed the crimes. The questioning. Chow and Frank were questioned in detail while seated at different tables in the restaurant. Frank was taken to police headquarters for additional questioning, where she later confessed to the crimes along with Lacaze. The defendant and Rogers Lacaze were arrested and charged with first-degree offense. Frank's father had stayed at her home not too long before the robbery, then he disappeared. The fact that the police found a human skull with a bullet hole in his head, buried under Frank's house not long after her father's disappearance, also helped her become a prime suspect of the restaurant slayings. Frank and Rogers Lacaze were indicted by a New Orleans Parish Grand Jury on April 28, 1995. Their trials were severed, and Rogers Lacaze was tried first on July 17 to 21, 1995 found guilty as charged, and served capital punishment. The Trial Frank's trial began on September 5, 1995, and on September 12, the evidence against her was so overwhelming that Frank's attorneys did not mount a defense despite subpoenaing 40 witnesses. The jury returned a guilty verdict on all counts and recommended capital punishment to all counts. The defendant was formally given capital punishment on October 20, 1995, and sent to condemned row at the Louisiana Correctional Institute for Women in St. Gabriel, Louisiana, very near Baton Rouge. On October 18, 2006, Frank's attorneys argued before the Louisiana Supreme Court that her sentence should be overturned because she was denied state-funded experts to help prepare for the sentencing phase of the trial. On May 22, 2007, the Louisiana Supreme Court ruled 5-2 that capital punishment should be upheld. On April 22, 2008, State Judge Frank Marullo signed the warrant for Antoinette Frank. According to the warrant, Frank was scheduled for execution by lethal injection on July 15, 2008. In May, however, the Louisiana Supreme Court issued a 90-day stay of execution, effective June 10, pending ongoing appeals. On September 11, 2008, the day that the state Supreme Court stay was to end, a new warrant was signed by the same judge. According to this second warrant, Frank was scheduled for execution by lethal injection on December 8, 2008. In a new round of appeals, defense attorneys argued that they had had too little time to review the voluminous record before the deadline for filing appeals. The Louisiana State Supreme Court ruled on the case again. Their decision, made public November 25, 2008, effectively canceled the warrant signed by Judge Marullo in September. Bias in question In September 2009, Frank moved to have Judge Marullo removed from her ongoing post-conviction appeals on grounds of bias, given that he had already signed two warrants for her. Louisiana State Judge Lori White heard the motion on September 2009 and on January 3, 2010, ruled that Marullo should not be taken off the case. Her attorney stated she would appeal the ruling to the state Supreme Court, which had already overruled both of Marullo's warrants. However, yet another lower court state judge ruled in October 2010 that Marullo had to be recused from the Frank and Lacay's cases because it was unclear if he had been open with the defense teams about his own surprising connection to the gun used in the restaurant slayings. If Frank were to be executed, she would be the first woman to be done so in the state since 1942. On 23 May 2007, Antoinette Frank was properly sentenced to be executed by lethal injection at her trial. Frank, 36, is one of two women on Louisiana's condemned row at the women's prison in St. Gabriel. Emotions remain raw across New Orleans when it comes to the case of Antoinette Frank. The high-profile case riveted the public as details emerged such as the fact that Frank had scored poorly on an NOPD psychological exam yet still earned a uniform, badge, and gun. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.